In the second part of our demo, we're going to be looking for artifacts associated with an advanced persistent threat. And to start into that, the first thing we'll do is we'll close the alerts that we have created and detections in the first part of the demo for insider threat. And to do that, I'll just uh, select all of these alerts, right click, and set my status to closed. And they'll disappear from my alerts pane. So we're going to begin this uh, threat hunt essentially with a IOC, a piece of information that we've been given that will help us focus in on potentially malicious activity um, within our enterprise. In this case, what we have to work with is an IP address. It's a known bad external IP, 172.217.7.228. And I've entered that into the global search box up here at the top right of the screen. When I turn time span, set time span to none, and click the magnifying glass, Adaptive Security will run a search for this uh, IP address for any communication with this IP address across the enterprise. And what I can quickly see is that 172.217.7.228 has actually been contacted uh, a number of times by processes uh, within my monitored um, enterprise. And at a glance, I can see that curl.exe is one of those processes, as is Chrome, and that there's a number of hosts involved. So to quickly figure out, well, which machines actually made contact, I can just group by host name, and then group by process name. And that'll show me that G4L 1.717 rather used Chrome. Chrome and curl.exe ran on G4L 3.7 to contact this IP address, and Chrome on G4L 5.10. So what I'd like to do now is to begin to put together um, a process tree associated with this threat. I'd like to know what actually started up curl.exe and is there additional information I can glean from putting together um, a better view of the process data. Now Adaptive Security makes that pretty easy by right-clicking Triage Insights Processes. I'm taken straight to a filtered view, filtered by endpoint and by time span and by um, process ID 1624 to show me activity associated with this particular event. And I can see that um, in this case it was command.exe that called curl.exe from a directory called users Chelsea Snowden documents apt simulator helpers. And the command line that was called was curl. Um, is actually listed here with all of the arguments including a URL, which is interesting and provides some additional opportunities for investigation. Now, if I was interested in files that were created around this time, triage insights files, this will identify any files that were actually created within this time by uh, curl.exe. Now, um, I think that there may be some other interesting activity in this time, so I'm going to un unclick um, process ID 1624 and click reload. And that's going to quickly show me all of the processes that either wrote or renamed or deleted files around this time. And if I group by process name and then group by file name, then I can begin to dig into this and see process the process mem.exe created a file called mk.ps1, which would be very interesting to examine. Uh, PowerShell has also dropped out a number of files. Um, Procdump64 has created something interesting called something windows.dmp. So this is another example um, of how you can hunt for advanced persistent threat artifacts uh, within the enterprise. Now detection of APT artifacts is also very easily possible in adaptive security. And to demonstrate that, I'm going to use something called APT Simulator, which is a tool that's often used to compare capabilities of EDR solutions. And what I'm going to do in this case is run, uh, as you can see here, the uh, attack framework or kill chain, if you will, has been broken down by stage from collection, command and control to credential access, etc. And I'm going to focus in this case on the persistence behaviors and see what detection is possible with adaptive security. The APT simulator is going to run a number of activities here um, on this uh, G4L 3.7 machine. And we'll just look at what 
uh, the adaptive security uh, dashboard shows us as this is happening. And you can see that immediately a number of alerts are triggered. Are triggered. And this is, again, um, indicative of, of what's possible with an ad adaptive security from the standpoint of detecting uh, advanced persistent threats. The first thing we see here is that command.exe ran at.exe and that uh, Mimikatz arguments were actually uh, run by at.exe, so credential theft may be in progress. A job file was written to disk. A uh, user was potentially spearfished because a tainted process attempted to spawn a shell program. A task was scheduled from the command line, and that actually happened twice. We can see here that um, a task was scheduled by scheduled tasks.exe. So let's take a closer look at scheduled tasks.exe. I'll right click triage insights processes. And here I can see that command.exe ran scheduled tasks.exe, the path that it ran from, and then my command, my command line arguments. I can see here that something called false update 22 is actually created uh, in this process. Now I can look for that um, again by right clicking insights files. Removing my PID filter. And just doing a search using control F for false. And that's going to quickly reveal uh, this file name false update 22, which appears to be a flash update that's been uh, obfuscated and the path, the file path and MD5 hash uh, of this file. And you can see that uh, a total of 15 different detections were executed uh, at this stage of persistence covering everything from um, a tainted process attempting to spawn a shell to scheduling tasks from the command line um, to credential theft via Mimikatz. So uh, if you're still with me, thank you so much for watching to this point and hopefully what we, uh, what we showed you gives you a good example or some good examples of how adaptive security can be used for both insider threat detection and insider threat investigation and then APT hunting and investigation as well.